Bibles, Exodus chapter 31, Exodus chapter 31. I was thinking about my family coming up and singing, my wife, myself, my daughter, my son-in-law. And then I thought, no, I don't think we'll do that. You all won't like us as much as you like them. So we'll just kind of keep it the way it is right now. I could have my father-in-law come and sing with us as well. And um, that will change your appreciation of music once he starts singing. And um, you, you say, you shouldn't say that about him. Ask him. But anyway, ask anybody who's ever heard him. But anyway, Exodus 31, Exodus 31, let's all stand as we read the Word of God. This is one of those sermons. I've had this one in the making for a long time, long time, been waiting for the right time to preach it. Um, I don't think this is one of those that we're going to correct anything tonight. I think what we're going to do tonight is build the church tonight a little bit more. And, um, and I want to help us tonight. There's some in this church, you feel like, what do I have to offer? And I want to talk to you just a little bit tonight. Exodus 31, if you will, look at verse 1. The scripture says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of, of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. I want to take these verses tonight and I want to take that one name, Bezalel. Um, very interesting name and what God used him for. I believe that you'll find tonight you can be helped tonight by this one name. And I want to help us tonight in whatever way I can. I want you to, I want you to hear a little bit of the heartbeat of your pastor. And I want you tonight to um, let me be a help to this church so that we can all together. This is not my church. Let me help you out. This is not my church. This is our church. And the one who leads this church is God. So you're here. Understand, I'm, I, yes, I'm the pastor of the church, but this is our church. And I think there ought to be an ownership of our church. We ought to say this is ours. Uh, don't mess with our church. You with me so far? And, and, and we, we ought to be proud of our church. And I think it ought to be that way. But I want to, I want to help us tonight. I believe that tonight there's several that could really, maybe it, this will help you to kind of step up in your Christian walk. I want to help you tonight. Father, thank you for the goodness that you've allowed me to pastor these good people. I look around tonight. I see some new ones here tonight. I think of Carolyn. She's here tonight for, the, I think for the first time on a Sunday night, her and her friend. And I, I and that thrills my soul. I see others here tonight that they're that they're here and they and they're being faithful to church. That thrills me. Now I'm asking you tonight, God, um, allow me to help our church. May some people here tonight be helped because they've been in church. May we go home and then may this church be a stronger church because of what's preached and because of the decisions that will be made. Please help us now. I ask in Jesus' name, Amen. You may be seated. We often talk about the great leadership of Moses. Moses, no doubt, was a great leader. If you, if you ever read about him, imagine um, leading about a million, some think, two million people across the wilderness for 40 years with, with them complaining and griping. Um, it gives you a new appreciation for a leader like Moses. Moses, many a time, if he would have said, okay, God would have killed Israel. But Moses loved his people and said, no, I want them to go further. But as is always the case, can I tell you, oftentimes we look, we talk about his leadership out of Egypt, but can I say we often overlook those who helped Moses accomplish that great task of leading the children of Israel through that, through that land of, of, of that wilderness right there. Moses would have never done it by himself. He would have cracked. He'd have, he, it would have, that whole thing would have collapsed. But there are some unsung heroes behind him and underneath him that God used to help him as he followed God's command in leading them to the promised land. Now, Bezalel was one of these people. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you need, see the name Bezalel, it, we, we look at it and we say, who is this guy? Some of you, um, some of you say, what's so big about this name? I want to tell you here in just a couple minutes. But Bezalel was not a preacher. He, the Bible never records one time him teaching one lesson. Never tells us one time that he preached one sermon. Yet 
he was critical to the work that God had for Israel there in the wilderness as we study it. Now, now get this now. He was one of those quiet people. I like to talk about Brother Tom Davis, the uh, Davison, the quiet, the quiet type, Brother Kyle, the quiet type. Those people that are just quiet behind the scenes, but they're critical to what we do. They're not no one, no one, no one goes around and says, Boy, did you hear what they they just like quietly walk in the background, do what they're supposed to do. And that that's what made it so strong. Now, when I look at this, God, God gave this guy a special talent. What was that? God said, we're going to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. God says, we need a tabernacle in the wilderness. Now, Moses, I, I don't think, was a carpenter. Moses, he, he didn't show any carpenter skills. Yet, God says, now, Moses, I've given you a man. His name is Bezalel. Bezalel, God says, as we just read right here, if you look at verse 3, he says, I feel with the spirit of God in other words that word and if you look at that word spirit it's a small s not a big s the big s is the Holy Spirit small s is the disposition of God he says I feel with the spirit of God he had God's disposition he was godlike he was a godly person that wasn't all oh, knows what he says he says I feel with the spirit of God now notice in wisdom so he had wisdom he had an understanding he had knowledge and notice what it says in all all manner of what? Workmanship. This guy was a laborer. No doubt, Bezalel used those talents in the work world, but God says, I want you to take your talent in the work world, and I want you to use it in God's world, so that way you can better help this ministry of leading the children of Israel through the wilderness. Now, he never preached that one sermon. We'll never hear him preach a sermon like uh, R.G. Lee um, 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 uh, that had preached um, God, um, payday someday. We'll never hear the sermon of, a, of J. Harold Smith um, God's Three Deadlines. He, he didn't preach any sermon like that. He did not stand up on the day of Pentecost and preach and 3,000 people got saved. But can I tell you this? He was critical to the ministry of Moses. I imagine one day when we get to heaven, Bezalel will be standing right there, if not in front of Moses, because he did it in the background without the recognition, and God says, I can use people like that in the ministry. Why? Because that's what makes a ministry great. Amen. Amen. That's right. What made him so critical was he used the talent from employment to help God's work. Yeah. Every great leader has several Bezalels that help them. I want you to think with me. I think of my pastor for many years, Dr. Um, Dr. Jack Hiles. Brother Hiles did not do the hospital calls in his church. Very rare did he make a hospital call. But he had a man by the name of Johnny Colston. If you ever hear Brother House preach, the man that reads the scripture before Brother House preached was Johnny Colston. Johnny Colston had that, he, he, just, he had that grandfatherly type of personality. He was that steady, calm individual that was just steady, gave us a calmness there. And when Brother House passed away, I think we kind of all looked at Brother Johnny Colston. And he gave that church that calmness during that storm, that great storm that our church faced. He was that calm. I would kind of put it this way, kind of I think what Brother Harjo is to our church is what Brother um, Colston was to First Baptist. Now, I, I'm, I'm just saying that Johnny Colston, when you thought about him, didn't seem to be that great. But there was something about Brother Colston when you, when you were in the hospital, you had a family member in the hospital, he walked inside that room. There was a calmness. There was something about Johnny Colson coming in, and he and he was there representing the church, representing the pastor. I remember when my when my aunt was on the final days of her life, and we we're in the hospital. I think it was on a Wednesday night. I think it was. She was about ready to step into heaven's source. I remember Johnny Colson walked inside. I remember it was like a comfort on the inside of the heart because the man of God had sown up. He wasn't a pastor. He did, he. If you heard him preach, you would never go. Home. I heard, I've heard him preach. Brother Heinrich's heard him preach. I don't know if he did. You didn't go home. And say, wow, wow, boy, heaven came down. No. It was, you sat there and you said, thank God it's over. <laughs> good man, good man. Get this now. 
But First Baptist Church, Hammond, Indiana, would not have been what it was without a Johnny Colson. Anybody that sat there in those days saw Johnny Colson, and he was that steady. He was that one that was there in and out, always there. You always expected him to come up and read the scripture. Why? That's just who he was. I think of another man, um, um, my, uh, Roy Moffat. Roy Moffat was saved in the ministry there. Roy Moffat, he was just he he great great personality to some degree. But Roy Moffat was that one that Brother Hiles could depend on because he grew up in that church. He got or got saved in that church and and was under Brother House. He was a trustworthy man. But he, there, there's something about Roy Moffat and the buses. Roy Moffat could get things out of the bus ministry, out of lay people, not college students, lay people. These are volunteers. He was able to get them to step up and do something mighty. And now get this now to this day. Now, now some some know that name, Roy Moffat, um, who've been around for, for, for some time. And certainly he and his wife, um, a great team together. But can I tell you, what was it? He was a Bezalel. He is a busy Leo. Now, he did not have the disposition. He did not have the um, the personality of a Johnny Coulson. He was more bubbly. He was more upbeat. He was uh, he, he was just a, he's a good man. But get this now, Beza Leo. Yeah. I think of another guy. Now, a lot of, a lot of people won't remember this. Name. I had to call my wife. I couldn't remember the name. Brother Erickson. Brother Erickson, Brother Davison sat right there where you sat in the back. Brother Erickson was the maintenance guy at First Baptist Church. When it got too hot, Brother Howes or too cold, Brother Howes would say, he'd do this, he'd go, how many of you, too hot? And, he, and he'd look around, anybody too cold? And he'd kind of joke around a little bit. Then, I don't know how they did it over there, but he would just throw out these numbers. He'd say, um, Brother Erickson, um, two, three, one, two, something like that. And, and he knew exactly what that was. It was just turn it up, turn it down, whatever it was. It was just the same thing I'd do with him. We'd do our little signs up here, you know, the baseball signs. You also, what's the preacher doing? Is he hot? Is he cold? What's he doing? Just doing baseball science to Brother Davison at all. Now, now get this now. Now, no one ever saw Brother Erickson in the back. He, he was just back there. Something went wrong. Somebody got sick. He was there to get it cleaned up. Something that broke, he made sure. It was just that behind the scenes guy, get this now, that helped the work to go forward. Why? He was a Bezalel inside of the church. I look at our church here. I, I think of different people who are Beza I, I just I, I know I bragged on him a little bit this morning, but Bradley, I look at him. He's a professional driver. He has a love to make sure that these buses are right. Yeah. I love that. No one's asked him. He's just taken his talent. And he's taken his wisdom, and he says, I'm going to help God's work get done because I want kids to ride the bus to church. I don't want the bus to break down. He just, he get this now. I, I, I don't know if, I don't know if he could preach. I don't know if I said, Hey brother Bradley, why don't you come up here and preach? He said, no preacher. Don't do that to me. I, I don't think so. Now we'd have to look at that jacket for while you're preaching and try to figure out if you're as good of a preacher as your jacket is. But can I tell you right now? Oh, this church, our bus ministry would not be what it is without that man right there. Now, what is he? He's a Bezalel. He's a Bezalel. He's that one that works in the background. Nobody sees him every week gassing up those buses. Every week making sure those buses are ready to run. Every week just comes here. Don't have to, I, I don't have to worry about it. As long as he's in town, they're cared for. Why? A Bezalel. That, that, that type of a personality that you say, boy, I, I know it's going to be done. Thank God for that type of person. Amen. Yeah. I think of Mrs. Mixon back there. Amen. She's, don't take this wrong, she's our money miser. She can tell you what we, what we pay per, for, for the meat, per serving, what we paid for the meat. She's got it down. She, I mean, there's no one that can save the money. She, 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 she has this ability to just to be able to break things down so that our church can save money. 
When, I, when we got a big day coming around, she'll come in the office. She'll say, okay, preacher, what do you want? And I'll say, now, what does this cost? What does it cost per serving? She says, well, let me work on it a little bit. She'll come back. And, man, she has everything down to the penny, to the penny. Now, you know what that helps me do? That helps me plan for our church. Right. Now, I'll be honest, recently we shopped for new insurance for our church. I think we pay $25,000. Am I right on that? $25,000 a year just for the insurance of this church. Oh. I had her go through the, the insurance papers. Let me help you out. If you've ever read insurance papers, they're frustrating. Yeah. You know, a lot of legal terms in there that I tried to give it to Brother Brandon. He says, no, I'm a lawyer. I don't do those kind of things. I'm too lazy. For, I'm sorry. He says, hi. He says, give it to Miss. I gave it to Mrs. Mixon. Mrs. Mixon took those. She read through those things. She started figuring out some things that could save our church some money. And we started implementing them into our church. Now you say, why? Because because that's a Bezalel. That one behind the scenes that says, you know what? I've got something I can give of my talent to God. Amen. Amen. I think of Brother Dion. Yeah. Amen. Everybody knows who Brother Dion is. You say, why? Because you can see that bright. But anyway, but you can see Brother Dion. Brother Diom, certainly he works for our church, but there's more. I think the thing I love about him, he's able to go around this church and find all the maintenance things. And he just, he fixes up the church every week after people have maybe not, not treated it right. And he comes through here and does his best. And, and if he doesn't know, he'll do his best to figure out. I've watched him many a time looking at a YouTube channel. Thank God for YouTube. He's learning how to do something with YouTube and just trying to figure it out. And, uh, and I've tried to get him to do that with the panels back here, the electrical panels, but for some reason, and he says, no, I'm not going to do that. But no, just kidding you. Now, now get this now. There's something about that that just takes the talent that he says, and, and, and he's a, everything he does, first class, everything he does is right. Why? Oh, I looked, I watched that. He and his wife, they, 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 well, I mean, he, 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 he kind of, he kind of um, let the cat out of the bag. He says, my wife loves doing flowers. Uh, well, thank God, because I don't. If I did a flower, it would just be cement right all the way around. Well, I said, you all got the task. It's your husband's fault. I'm just letting you know. And but man, and boy, they started look, going around. They did a wonderful job up front. And, and next spring, we'll finish out the sides right here. But can I tell you something? What is that, Bezalel? Bezalel. I think of Miss Joanne. Miss Joanne. She's now in heaven. You know... I'd watch her every day come around this property. She'd pick up the trash around the property. She'd go to the flower beds, and she'd, she'd pull the weeds in the flower beds. And I, I was noticing the other day, I mentioned Brother Dilma. I said, Miss Joanne's not here to make sure that the flower beds are weeded over her, around here and up there. I said, can you take care of it? And, um, and he sent Eric to do it instead. But, but anyway, but, 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 but Miss Joanne, just that Bezalel behind the scenes. And no one understood what she was doing out here in the field, just this, this older lady out in the field walking around just picking things up and no one understood it but what was she? She was just saying okay I can do something for my church. I can help my church. I can pull a weed. I can pick up a piece of trash. Can I tell you hey that's what it takes for a great church to succeed. Yeah. That's right. Amen. I think of Brother Trimble. Yeah. He said what's his talent? Nothing. <laughs> wears funny socks. <laughs> if I've got something, he, he, he helped me um, in, the, in this building here getting everything done. When I've got some, some kind of a project building wise, he's taken it and he's learned it and he says, I, and, 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 and he's, he's, he's gotten a whole lot better at it than where it was at the first. And I, so instead of me yelling at everybody else, I yell at him. He, if, you, if he comes in one day, his hair's all gone because I blew it off. Well, I, got, I yelled at him and he just goes to everybody else and in a kind way and he does the job. Now, now there's something about that, that behind the scenes, somebody just says, you know what I can do? I can take my talent. I can take my talent. I think of Brother Shank over here. Brother Shank is a great at just solving situations on the fly. Now, I'm a planner. Something gets out of sync. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all shaken up. I get a little bit shaken. I get a little nervous. He, he thrives in that. He, he, gets sh he gets nervous when we have the plan. <laughs> right? He, he comes to me, preacher, I need to be more organized like you. I said, I agree. <laughs> 
But I need to, I need to be able to have that come in the, in the, in the, in the moment when everything's going on. That, that, that one that says, I can care for that. I can plug that hole. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hey. What is that, Bezalel? Yeah. Bezalel. I think of Brother Griggs. Yeah. Amen. Good with our children. Does a phenomenal job. Yeah. Amen. The best junior church preacher in all the world is right there. Just does a phenomenal job with those children up there. There's times up there, I found out just recently, it's just he and his wife up there with all, I said, don't you dare do that again. I said, we'll put the Wilkies up there by themselves, but not you and your wife. No, no, we're not going to do that. Now, understand, under, but, but, but he's good with those children and he loves those children. Not everybody. Could you imagine me putting you in there, Brother Stafford, at your age with all the, with a hundred children up there? You'd be, he, you think he's cracked. He'd be really, he'd be in the funny farm by now. You say, what is it? Just somebody takes what they have and says, you know what? I don't have to be that guy at the top. I'm just going to get inside. I'm going to work. I'm going to help. It's that area that, hey, somebody has to say, I will be a busy Leo. What? Take my talent that God has given me and I'm going to use it for God. I think of Brother Turk. He's he's been a great help to me. He'll sit up here and he'll tell me, preacher, someone's been missing for a while. Has an eye of seeing somebody who's just kind of dropped out a little bit and he'll be, he'll just go and visit them during the week and try to get them back in church. Maybe some of you, he's, he stopped by your house and he has said, Hey, Hey, let's get back in church. Something about that, that one that can help the preacher because I can't do it all. Can't do it all. I think a brother Hall has taken our youth department and has really helped our youth department take another step and and just just take the talent that you have and say, okay, I don't I, I may not be I don't I may not know how to do it, but I'll learn just something about the Bezalel. Amen. Amen. I think of our nursery workers. God bless them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Someone says, do you ever want to put the men in the nursery? I said, no, I want to keep our babies alive. (laughs) Could you imagine Brother Angel in the nursery? (laughs) You think Brother Angel doesn't have much hair right now? I'm telling you right now, he'd be, he would pluck it all out just a little bit that he has right now. Man, I walk by that nursery sometimes, Brother Jim, I walk by that nursery and I hear those babies crying. I said, thank God for those ladies. I don't, ladies, I don't pray for patience. I, I don't, I pray for grace. And I say, God, give them grace tonight. God, help them tonight, you know. And my wife will come home maybe one night and she'll say, man, the, the babies, they all tend to wet their diaper. All are not just wet, you know, the other side. And um, the all same time, right before, right before the moms and dads are coming and trying to pick up their babies. And you, hey, you try to deal with some of these mamas. What is that, Bezalel? Now let me give you several statements and then we'll go home. Statement number one, not everyone can be a leader. There's one leader. One leader. Doesn't mean that that leader is, is, knows everything, but he's the leader. God gave the church the pastor. Get this now. And because he's the pastor, he has to lead. He stands before God. Now listen to me. So you got to understand, I don't just throw people into a position. I pray about it and I ask about it. And I say, God, what do you, what do you need? Now, God, I need your help. And I, as I, as I go forward, I, there's times I, I, I say to God, God, I wish the church had a better pastor, but, but God's put me here. And I'm saying what we've got to understand. Hey, not everybody can be the pastor. You say, why? Not everybody has a loud mouth like me. No amens on that one right there. You all be good now. Can I say statement number two? There's no shame in being a Bezalel. No shame. I want to tell you something right now. I look at Brother Luis back there. Works the parking lots every Sunday. I, I guess you were out there today. I don't know if you was or not. Out there in the rain, in the cold, parking, making sure people are parking safely. And if anybody's running too fast, he jumps in front of the car and lets them run over them. Just kidding you. Can I tell you something? There's something about that. There's no shame in that. 
There is no shame in being that person behind the scenes. That you say, but, 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 but what do I get out of it? No, you got the wrong attitude about this. We're serving God. We're in the business of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hey, somebody's got to do it. How would you like to be the guy back there in that PA booth playing video games during the whole service? <laughs> when something goes wrong, he sees the evil eye of the pastor. Yeah, and every once in a while, I'll get an Ahmad to so get back there and tell him to wake up, or I'll do something. And, I, and, and, and because we don't have that way to communicate from here to back there. And, 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 but but not, listen to me, not everybody can do that. Uh, amen. Some people, the, their skin's too thin, and if I was to get on them, they'd get upset and leave the church. But old brother Brandon back there, he has that thick skin. He can take it. He understands the pastor loves him, loves his family, and wants it done right. And you say, what is that? It's a bezaleo that says, okay, I understand my ministry. I understand this is important. It all together works together. Amen. Can I say statement number three? No church will be what it's supposed to be without Bezalels. I want you to listen to this. God has placed inside of every church the people to accomplish the work that that church is supposed to do. We have them here. Now some aren't faithful. So we've got to get them faithful. Some, some, some just think, well, I, I, what can I do? Oh, you don't understand. Everybody, they, they, everybody has their idea of what they want to do. What well, you don't understand, maybe that area is full, but there's another area that's not full that you could be involved in. But, but, but some people say, well, I don't think it's that great of a job. Oh, let me tell you something. Somewhere we've got to understand God's already. The problem is that, is that people have not used the talents that God has given them to do something inside of here. Statement number four. God always equips a church with people needed to do his work efficiently. Listen. I don't know if you saw the post this morning on the Facebook page. And, oh, Brother Lauren took a beautiful picture of the buses this morning. He's got a knack of being able to take that camera and doing some with graphics. And, of course, he's an organizer, too. But I saw him take that picture. He had the right angle. Everything was just right. You see the pictures from last Sunday? That man had the perfect pictures. Perfect pictures. Looked like a sea of people inside of here. Now, what is it? A talent. A talent. Now, that says, okay, I don't have to be the guy up front. I just want to be a, a part of the team. I want to take my talent, use my talent for what I can do for God. Amen. Amen. Statement number five. You have something you can contribute to the work of the Lord. Now, I don't always know what it is. But you have something. You have a talent. Sometimes I find out somebody's talent. I said, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And I, and I, and all of a sudden my brain begins to work. Boy, I could use them if they're willing to be used. Now, do you understand? I, sometimes I, I don't, I don't, I don't know everybody. I wish I knew everybody as well as God did, but I don't. And can I tell you, you do have a talent. There's something about your talent that you can use for the work of the Lord. I'm saying whatever that is, God gave it to you, not just to make money out there, but to help God's work to do something for God. The church often needs mechanics, decorators, organizers, someone to prepare food, handymen, uh, someone just to do the, the jobs that nobody else would do. Someone's got to clean the bathrooms. Someone's got to patch the holes in the wall. Do you understand? If you understood everything that goes on around this church every Sunday. There's something for everybody to do. Amen. There just is. Oh, no one might not see it, but no one knew about Bezalel. You read over that name how many times and never thought about it one time. Oh, wow. yeah. 
Yet here tonight, we're talking about Bezalel. I think one of the great successes of Moses' ministry was discovering a Bezalel that took his talent. Amen. Yeah. That's all that Brother Angel did. He took his talent to help this church. Amen. Get this now. And can I tell you, we've got to understand that they that they that you that, that you have something you I don't know what it is. There's something you can do to help. Can I say statement number six? Listen carefully. Bezalel donated his talent to further God's cause. Now this is the key. This is not a rich church. This church, we pay our bills. We do our best. We try not to waste the money. But do you understand? There's a blessing in giving of your time to God that God says, I'll bless that. I was in a church years ago. And the pastor always wanted to pay everybody. But people wanted to donate their time. The preacher said, ah, we don't do things free. One day I was talking to that pastor. I said, pastor, I said, do you understand something? You're robbing them of a blessing. You're robbing them of a blessing. The fact that they want to give their time, you ought to be thankful they want to give their time. But can I say this? We're not a bank here that we can just finance everybody's home. We can't do that. The church does need volunteers for people that will step in and say, I'll help in this area. I, I don't need to be paid. I just need a, I just want to serve the Lord and I want God to be pleased with what I'm doing. Hey, somebody, just take whatever talent you have and let God use it. Statement number seven. Your talent contribution is not a substitute for soul winning. Amen. I want you to listen very carefully to this. If everybody says, well, that's all I need to do, and you don't go soul winning, then this church will die. Soul winning is the heartbeat of this church. Amen. So you've got to take what you do and say, I'll give this part, but the rest, I'm still going to be a soul winner. I'm still going to tell someone how to be saved. I want to do my best. I was talking to uh, uh, was an old preacher friend of mine, still alive, um, Brother Bachman. He lives out in the Indiana area. He can't get out anymore. He's got cancer. Brother Bachman, um, I found out from his son, hit Brother Bachman. I don't know how he does it, but he calls on the phone every day, and every week he's leading several people to Christ just by calling people up. Amen. Now, I don't know what you can do, but I know you can do something with what you have. You can be that Bezalel in the background that says, my talent may not be much, but God can take that little talent that you do have and multiply it. Now, follow me very carefully. I've preached all of that to come down to this. You say, preacher, what's the benefit? Okay. Be- the name Bezalel means this. In the shadow of God. In the shadow of God. That reminds me of Psalm 91.1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall dwell in the shadow of the who? Almighty. Do you understand? Because he took his talent, he had a special closeness to God that others did not have. That did not take their time. Do you think Bezalel was the only one that had the carpenter um, um, ability in Israel? Absolutely not. There was other carpenters. But one man, one man took his talent and used it. Yeah. Hey. Now listen. Yeah. You say, what, what do I get? Okay, let's talk about a judgment seat one day. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's it. One day I stand before an almighty God. I'm afraid that though I'm the pastor of this church, I'm afraid there'll be many of you out there standing in front of me in the line with God because behind the scenes, I get the accolades, but you're the one that does the work and God will recognize you in heaven. You'll stand in that judgment seat. Hey, take what you have. Use it for God. You say, preacher, what can I do? Tonight at the end of the service, we put something together. A ministry info. 
We've talked, we've got in here all the little, little ministries that we have. Get involved in a ministry. Just get involved in some ministry. Read through this and say, I think I might, and, and, and let us know. Then can, I, then can you do this? When you're walking out the door, if you've got a special talent, would you put that, write it on a piece of paper? Would you drop it in a, uh, would you give it to Brother Tom? Maybe drop it in the box and say, I've got to, and put your name on that paper. Why? Because I don't know. I don't know what your talent is, but I promise you this. God didn't put you in this church for no reason. God Put you here to help this church. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now use it. Amen. Use it. You say, preacher, how's this going to help build our church? Can you imagine? We get a church filled with bees Amen. He's talking to brother, um, brother Daniel tonight. He says, I, I need some more security. Need some more security. Those guys in the security, no one knows what they what those guys do. They sit out here, and sometimes they'll have to be out in the cold. And they, but they, but they make sure our grounds are safe. Can I tell you? Everybody has something they can help with. Amen. Everybody. Yeah. And whatever your talent is, whether you're a teenager, whether you're a child, whether you're an adult, you have a talent. Use it for God. Amen. Use it for God. You say, why? This is why. I believe if you'll use your talent for God, God will multiply it. And I believe in your workforce. Amen. You'll rise above the rest. Uh, amen. Because God will bless it. That's right. But you got to say, I'm just a Beza Leo. Oh, no, you're not just a Beza Leo. Yeah. I look at Brother Tiger back there. Sits out here every Sunday morning, welcoming people into church. Something about that. Just watching a guy sit there, welcome to Maranatha Baptist Church. Hey, may not be much what you think, but in God's eyes, God says, "I want to, I want to, I want to help you, Moses. I want to give you a bezalel." Needs a bunch of bezaleels, so we can do God's work to the best that God expects us. Father, tonight. I'm thankful for our church. We've got a laboring church. But there's some here tonight, I don't know. They just, they've come, they come Sunday morning, Sunday night, and sometimes even on Wednesday night. And I don't know what their talents are. But God, I know you put them in this church for some reason. Now, Lord, I pray that tonight we would all say, God, what talent?